Craig, always good to have you back on board, mate. Two big topics to talk about. Obviously, overnight, Angelo Matthews and the dismissal against Bangladesh. It's not a man cad, which is legal anyway. It's not a bear stow, which might have been a little underhanded, but that's legal as well. This is just a weird one, isn't it? Surely a guy is allowed to replace his helmet. Yeah, I mean, it's the the, the timed out rule um, where you've got two minutes to get out and face your four, first ball. Um, Angelo Matthews walked out, took his guard, and then went to clip the helmet properly and it broke. Um, so then, theoretically, they said that he didn't have two, you know, didn't face a ball. He, he tried to get the helmet replaced. And then good old Shakiba Hassan um, made an appeal. And, um, you know, he, under the laws of the game, they decided that he hadn't faced the ball within two minutes. So he was given out, timed out, um, which, when you look at it, it, it just actually, Marty, it's junk. It's rubbish. It's um, Bangladesh, um, you know, Shakib, who in some ways should never be playing the game. If you've seen some footage of him playing in a game, he went and ripped the stumps out and just about threw them at the umpire. You know, there is there is the spirit of the game, and and that's it's if the laws always override the spirit. But this one is absolute junk, and Bangladesh should look themselves in the mirror and be very embarrassed. And I'd say, well, they probably won't be Marty. Um, and I'm saying, you know, Matthews has probably got some history as well on certain things. But you know, when it comes to the game of cricket, a guy's about to face his first ball and his helmet breaks. I mean, for goodness sake, you, you let him replace it. You don't appeal and get him, you know, out without facing a ball. It's just, you know, that that is absolute junk. We've talked about, you know, many different things in the last month when it comes to the sport, but this one's right at the top of it. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's, it's every sport I'm watching. I was watching Chelsea versus Spurs today and the lack of common sense in the VAR and the way that's employed. We look at the TMO in the World Rugby Final and the lack of common sense. It just seems that for whatever reason, we've just created this scaredy catness around sport where where gentlemen can't actually stand up and behave like gentlemen and just say, listen, no, 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 no. I don't care what the rules are. This is absolutely and utterly an incident where common sense overrides everything else. We don't oh, want another absolutely. Philip Hughes here. If that guy gets hit and his helmet falls off and he gets hit in the head, then what? I mean, you just know what the circumstances could potentially be and how disastrous. It's just so simple. His helmet's bloody broke. Let him replace it, mate. Oh, yeah, yeah. again, I, I, was, I was flabbergasted. I mean, the best though one, you argue rightly and wrongly, different sides. But at the end of the day, you know, we see that a lot in the games and most cricketers have probably tried it in their life. You know, you've got, you know, certain parts of games, but this one is just absolutely, like, again, you know, I can't swear, Marty, but it, it, it's actually embarrassing that Bangladesh would like to do that or we even are think about it. doing yeah. that. Mm. Oh, it's just embarrassing. And I mean, you know, it's a little bit like, um, you know, Every team, I mean, we're about to go over and play them in a test series. You should just about say, no, we're not going. We're not going. You guys can go and play in your own backyard with your own rules and, you know, come and join the big boys when you actually sort your stuff out. Because, you know, this is, again, pinnacle of the, the sport. Um, you know, there's nothing on at these games. But, you know, there is. It just gets a stage, Marty, where you shake your head. And, you know, I suppose as people who, you know, coach teams and look after teams, you just make sure that you'd never allow that to happen in your environment. But, um, unfortunately, it didn't. As I say, you know, hopefully... Hopefully when they finish the game, that no one will talk to them because that's what they deserve. You know, that might be a bit harsh, but um, they've made that decision. They should lie in the bed that they've made. We've got a massive match coming up against Sri Lanka on Thursday. Uh, the way that the run rates are and, and also the permutations, computations, the calculations and so forth, we may not have to win it, but let's just win it because we actually want to get yeah. into the semifinals on a roll. And I think that's the best way to approach this, win that game. I wanted to just ask you about Rashan Ravindra and reading his scores here in the eight games. 123 not out against England, 51 next match against the Netherlands, nine against Bangladesh, 32 Afghanistan, 75 India, 116 Australia. South Africa he failed with nine, but Pakistan 108. So those last four games, all losses, but he's just batting magnificently. Tell us about this guy. Where did he come from? And, 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 and how good can he possibly get? Oh, like, you know, he's showing how good he can be. And, and I think, you know, I, I'll take my hat off. He, he surprised me hugely. I mean, always been hugely talented, Marty. He's been, you know, you got the stories he grew up. And, you know, he's just been one of those young boys who used to go to the nets with Dad and just, just absolutely loved the game and would hit a 1,000 balls and then, you know, um, got picked on the New Zealand under-19 side. Uh, Wellington, I think, have done a really good job with him where um, they picked him early. They show confidence in him. He's, he's played different roles, but he's always been a batter who bowls Marty as well. People probably, you know, when he first come into the side has been, you know, down the order and, and maybe thought he was more of a left-arm spinner. So he's always been a batsman. He's always been a batter who bats at the top of the order. Um, and then, you know, just through being, I think, you know, really well nurtured through Wellington cricket um, and then giving him opportunities and giving him belief that, yep, you're playing. Then when he got in the black caps, maybe a little bit surprising. The same thing. Um, they've given him a huge amount of opportunities in different roles. 
I don't think they would even guess and say, hey, this is what we expected. I think, you know, um, not so much from a, a talent point of view, but, you know, the, the role that he's been thrown into because of Kane's injury, um, the top of the order, that would have been very much last-minute thinking because we were all working out who's going to be in the top three. And, and life's all about taking opportunities. And, you know, the Indian pitchers are good to bat on. But, but gee whiz, he's just showing uh, amazing temperament. I think the strike rate's the bit that's probably got me, Marty. I mean, you know, maybe expect him to get 80 off 90. The fact that he's playing these innings and, and striking at 120, and what it shows, Marty, I mean, look at our best players. They're all, you know, what I've talked about, the craft. You know, they're back with craft. Yes, he can hit the ball over the boundary, but he's not playing just standing there and swinging and, and hoping, you know, for the best. But genuine cricket shots. He plays a beautiful cover drive, a straight drive. He's got a lovely pull shot. Um, yes, you know, him and Kane the other night batting together was just a joy to watch because it's craft batting. It's just genuine high skill and... You know, what's great for us, we're a little bit worried, I suppose, Kane finishes and, you know, Ross has finished. Um, what's going to sort of be the, the next part? You know, we'll, we've got Rich in there now who's going to be, you know, a bit more expectation on him. But it's great to know that we've got another player coming through and we'll be able to take the mantle. We've still got to learn a lot when it comes to Red Bull. But, gee whiz, it's just been, it's been a joy to watch. And, and it's so nice. When you see good people and, you know, the, the talk around the traps, and I don't know Rutch well enough, but... He's just a wonderful guy, um, you know, a great team man. Um, and isn't it great when you see people like that succeed?